Hey, this is David from the Shepherd School, and what we're going to do today is use some uh, tuna fish cans, some cardboard, and a number 10 can to make a little uh, stove. So the number 10 can is going to make the stove body, and the tuna fish cans and the cardboard are going to make the fuel. So basically, you just get your number 10 can, some metal snips, and a little uh, can opener and all you do is just cut a little doorway big enough for you to be able to slide the tuna fish can into the base kind of bend it around to make a little lip so you don't cut yourself. This is where the little ridges on the can come in pretty handy to keep everything even. See how you've bent that around? That way you can just slide the tin can underneath. And then what you're going to do is take your can opener, punch you some air holes. That's all there is to it. And what you'll do is insert the fuel in there after you light it and then you could either cook directly on this or you could use it for a skillet uh, or put a skillet on it or put put a canteen cup or something on there so it's pretty light pretty small and pretty cheap so now what we're going to do is we're going to go upstairs to the oven where i've got a double boiler and i'll show you how to make the fuel All right, here we are for uh, part two. Just to show you, here's the stove. Here's the little heaters. They slide in. And all this is is a tuna can with uh, corrugated cardboard that I cut in strips and then uh, wrapped up, wound up really tight. It stuck in there. And then once they were in there, I just uh, uh, pushed in and, and pressed in smaller strips until this was very very tight the tighter that the uh, corrugated cardboard is the uh, longer this is going to burn okay so you want to make sure you'll do it and you'll say you know this is pretty tight and then uh, shove in about five more when you absolutely cannot get any more in then it's done now i made a bunch of these up the other day um, using old packet boxes but then when we moved and we came out to here, uh, they didn't make the move. The wife was like, get rid of that junk, and, and so they got all messed up. So, what I've got here is just some paraffin wax. And since I don't have a double boiler, and you don't want to melt wax without a double boiler, I've got me a pot of water boiling, and then I've got a, uh, a good uh, wheel pot. You don't want to use your regular pots for this because once you get wax in there, uh, then uh, that's all she wrote. And it's going to be in there from now on. So I'm going to stick a couple little bricks in there and I'm going to melt it up. Which I could have got away with just one. But I want to leave some wax in the uh, container to solidify. That way the wife knows that that's for uh, wax even though it's going to be back in the storage room. Okay, all the wax is melted. I'm 
I'm going to very carefully make a mess but I got about two full bricks of wax actually in the container and when that cools I'll scrape the wax off of the uh, stove and melt that back up in the uh, boiler and then uh, scrape any wax off the outside of the cans and tomorrow I'll go outside and we'll cook us up a hamburger or something so you can see that this thing actually works. Okay, so we came out here to actually cook using this uh, tin can stove that we've made just on the back of the pickup truck. So I brought a skillet and I'm going to uh, basically light this in the skillet and that way if it catches on fire I could just toss the thing off, you know, and get it off the truck. And we're basically just going to cook a, a hamburger patty and one of these fresh eggs. And these are really fresh because we just got them um, out of the hen house. So, and I've not done this since I was a Cub Scout back in the day, so uh, uh, we'll see how it actually ends up working. I could caught a little bit. There we go. We just needed some sort of wick to start catching that paraffin. It's 2.56, now that it's lit, see how long it starts to get uh, hot enough to cook on. Well, we're waiting on this thing to cook. Why don't we turn the camera around and get a picture of our uh, Hey bear Hey bear You can't hardly tell but uh, he's still a puppy He's probably going to get about twice that size. Are you looking? Say something Get back here. I don't know if you could tell, but it's starting to sizzle and cook. It got hot pretty quick. The wife gave me a thumbs up. She thinks this is cool.
Okay, it's been burning about 10 minutes and it's, and it's extremely hot. Probably too hot to even try an egg. That's the problem with the thing. There's no real good temperature control to it other than pulling it out. Yeah. Probably not good for eggs. Go ahead and say it, but the wife wanted to try it. <laughs> If I could figure out a good way to put this thing out, it'd be reusable. Well, maybe that's a good way of putting it out. There you go. All right. Pretty cool. <laughs> well. It's a failure for eggs, but it's really good for uh, for frying meat. Thank Does you, it have any kind of temperature control to it? It's either all on or all off. So, uh, well, Bear will be happy. Yeah, the dog will eat the <laughs> egg. So, okay. Until next time, we appreciate it. You can always check us out online. Well, first, let's see. Not bad. Be better with ketchup, but pretty good. You can catch us online at www.tngun.com. Thanks. <laughs>